Okay, so in this video we're going to look at buttons. Let's come on down here to our widgets and we're going to do some work with buttons. Now, first thing you should know, if you're working in our engine, use this one broadcast button, not this one, your basic button. And this is because the broadcast button has a extra code attached to it that just makes it easier for your programmers to handle when they're attaching functions to it. So your basic button just comes out looking like this, very standard, and it's got some options for if you want to change its colours, change its behaviours when you're at runtime. So in a button style object over here, you've got four different button states, which are your normal, hovered, pressed or clicked, and disabled. And you've got in each of these, you've got a brush, so you can set an image, image size, you can place a tint on it if you're just using a basic image that you want to colour. So you can see here when I'm not using an image that just gives me a solid fill. You can change your image draw mode. Which can cause some interesting artifacts if you've not got an uh, image set. But right now the standard box is fine set each of these so that we've got some different colors just to demonstrate and disabled as I've mentioned before by default a disabled widget gets a sort of gray tint to it so I'm just going to go with that here by setting our gradient to match that. Now if I come on over to our test widget, which we're going to use as our sandbox for demonstrating things, you can see I've now got my widget I've just created and I can drag one of them down here onto the screen. So. I'm just going to quickly play that to demonstrate our basic button behaviours. Now as you'll notice in this, when I mouse over it or click it, the colour change is instant. We've got not got any nice fancy animated transitions or fades or anything like that. So in the course of this video, I'm going to show you how to do an animated transition on a button and also how to make a button that's not just your basic box shape. So if we want to make something that's a little more advanced, we're going to do that here in our complex button widget. So let's come back to that. So we're going to do a little bit of setup to begin with. First of all, we don't need a canvas panel. So the root of our widget is just going to be this broadcast button here. Now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to use the button as a container here, not as an actual visual image. So I'm going to reset all of this so the button draw style is none in all of its states. Just like that. You can copy and paste button styles, so that's a nice time saver. So now we've essentially got an invisible button, and we're going to use that as a container for our actual visuals. So a button can act as a simple panel, it can have a single child, but as that child can be a more complex panel widget, you can put all sorts of things inside a button. So we've got a horizontal box inside our button now, and we're just going to set that to fill the entire available space, including setting our padding down to zero so we've not got any borders around the edges. I'm also going to change our preview size. So 1000 by 200 is quite a nice preview size for a button. 
gives us a fairly standard aspect ratio for our button to work with. And we're going to start bringing together our elements. And in this particular example, we're going to do a button that has rounded edges and will stretch appropriately so that your rounded edges always look nice and neat and don't get skewed out of proportion, regardless of how wide or how tall you want to make your button. So, for this, we're going to start dropping some elements into our horizontal box. We're going to want two images and one border. And we're going to pop our border in the middle. Now, if you were doing a button without text, you could just use three images here. But because we're going to want to place some text on our button, we've got a border in the middle instead. So that we can drop some text in the middle of that. Now, you'll see that right now, our images are very small and squashed into a rectangular shape. We don't want that. We want our end images to always be square so that they will not be stretched. So let's set both of these to start with to the end images we're going to be using. I've already made textures for these so we can select them straight away. And you'll see right now they're trying to come in at the native size of the image so they've been stretched massively out of proportion and they're also stretching outside the button bounds. So that's not much good to us. To fix this we're going to wrap both of these with size boxes. And the size box is a container that allows you to override the size of its contents. And we're going to pop a width override on both of these size boxes, which matches the height of our widget. So now we've got this nice sort of pill shape which is our rounded button size that we're looking for. Now, right now, it's all sort of squashed up here at the left side of the widget, and we don't want that. What we want is for our button to occupy the whole of the widget size, so that we can stretch it out and resize it as needed, depending on the texture or our layout that we want to put it into. So, our border here, we're going to set its mode to fill, and now our space in the middle will stretch according to the button size, while these guys will remain constant. Now, there is a little bit of coding required to get this to stay constant depending on when you stretch your button. So, this is a code required button, but for just now, we're going to assume that the size we'll be using the button at is 200 so that everything will stay put nicely. So, now that we've got our basic layout, we need to start working on getting some colours in there and working on the animated colour transition that I mentioned. So, to start with, we're going to set some colours. So, I'm going to use colour and opacity over here. And we're going to make the default state of our button a nice blue colour. I'm just going to copy that. And we're going to make that colour of our border brush so everything matches up. And now that you can see our text here, I'm just going to set that in the middle of our widget so that it's nicely placed for the button. And make it a little bit larger so that the scale is appropriate. So, straight away, we're starting to look more like a proper button. Now, we come on down here to the animation panel, and we're going to start setting up our color change transition for when somebody hovers over the button. So I'm going to call this hover animation, and click on that. And you'll see when I select an animation, the timeline suddenly lights up. So, this is a basic keyframe animator tool, which will be familiar to anyone that's used anything similar. And what we're going to do is we're going to keyframe the colours of these the elements that I've just painted blue, and we're going to change them to a different shade when the button gets hovered over. 
So the easiest way to do this is to use this little icon here and it adds a keyframe for the property that it's next to to your selected animation track at the time you have selected in your timeline. So because this is going to be the zero state or the unhovered state of our button, that's just fine for us to do this at zero. So I'm going to click on this and you can see I've created a keyframe at zero for color and opacity on this image. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for our other image and for the brush color of our border. Now I'm going to drag over to our animation end. You can have an animation of any length, but for ease of editing and tweaking your animation play length, I find it's quite nice to have all animations last one second, because then you can use the playback speed function in your actual animation play function to tweak it easily without having to come back and manually stretch or shrink the length of your animation by moving your keyframes around. So it makes it much easier to test animations at different lengths if you put a nice static length like one second. So now I've come over here to the end. I'm going to create a new shade. So let's go a little bit darker. And copy that. I'm going to paste and keyframe. And that one as well. Paste and key. And now you can see if I scrub this back and forth, we have a nice, smooth, animated transition. You can do one for your on click event as well, following just the exact same process, so that you can have as many different button states or reactions as you'd like. But for now, we're just going to leave this one with the hover animation. That's your basic animation set up. However, right now, we've not got anything that's going to tell us to play. Now, for a finished product, your animation controls will be done in code. But for a quick test, it may be helpful to show you how to prototype playing an animation with a very basic little bit of blueprint scripting. So I'm going to demonstrate that here. As I mentioned before, right down here at the bottom of your details panel for any kind of input widget like a button, you'll see this green list of events. Now the one we're going to deal with just now is the on hovered. And you can see when I click on this, it takes me over to our other tab the blueprint graph. So, very basically, a red blueprint node is an event, such as a click, and what we're going to do is we're just very quickly going to script in a response to that click. So you'll see over here, we've got a reference already to our hover animation that we just created. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag that on over here into the graph and grab that, so we now have a hover animation node. Dragging down from that, I'm going to type play just to quickly find that and create a play animation function. And then all we're going to do is link these two nodes together and we've got it. That is our play function. So now, whenever our button is hovered, the hover animation will be played. I'm going to pop back to the designer. Again, come down to the bottom here, and to finish the setup for this, we're going to take the on unhovered event, and we've already got a reference to the hover animation, so I don't need to do that again. I'm going to do a second play function. And this time, we're going to tell it to play in reverse. So now, when our button is unhovered, it will return back to its default color. And compile and save. Now, you can see we've got this here. It is a little stretched because we haven't got that little bit of code that I mentioned. 
that would make sure that these update their width according to the widget size. But for a preview, it's still quite nice. Now, if we compile and save this, okay, in this window, you see, we've got nice fading in and out of our button animation. So, that's a lot in this one. We've covered animation, complex widgets, and button events. And I'm going to leave this one here. And I'll be back in the next one to show you how we're going to build up a menu using some of these buttons.